he's in his second spell with West Ham and already this season he's scored 12 goals. Robson continues a fruitful partnership with David Cross in this unchanged West Ham side. Supporting them from midfield, four players there, Holland, Kirbishley, Trevor Brooking and Alan Devonshire. And back in goal these days is Mervyn Day after the injury sustained on Match of the Day recently by Bobby Ferguson. Crystal Palace also have a fluid 4-4-2 formation with Ian Walsh keeping his place up front alongside Dave Swindlehurst and that means that £200,000 Mike Elvis is the substitute. That Palace team includes five players who were in their FA Youth Cup winning side last season and seven who helped to win the Youth Cup the year before. One of the most promising and developing young teams in English football. Robson and West Ham beginning to find their touch these last few minutes. This is Kirbishley. He wants Brush to come up on his outside so that he can use him and go the other way. Brooking to Kirbishley. Devonshire queuing up in the middle. Oh, Cross is there again. It went behind Pop Robson firstly. Appreciative crowd in at Upton Park. Now then, Nicholas Swindlehurst was just too far ahead of him, but it would have been a two against one otherwise. number seven in goes Bonds oh and well this lad Nicholas is a fierce competitor he's been uh, compared to Terry Yorath by some people because he is in fact Welsh and has played at uh, schoolboy and youth level for them and that little confrontation with uh, Billy Bonds who's no coward himself has produced a free kick to Crystal Palace oh and Day was stretching a shout I think from uh, one of the defenders or some help anyway good punch by day under pressure Murphy to Gilbert and Kemba may find himself on side here Jumping in, says the referee. By Nicholas. Taken by Bonds. Cross goes up. Turned away by, uh, well, I thought by Holland, but uh, I've got a corner's been given. Not sure that came off Ken Sanson. However, the referee says so. Bonds arriving again. Oh, it's got in. Billy Bonds gets the congratulations. Well, Bonds throwing himself forward at the corner and the ball bouncing haphazardly past Burridge. sloppy goal for Palace to give away from a corner that they might contest shouldn't have been Walsh getting in Murphy shot away off Tommy Taylor perhaps the stiffest test of the afternoon now for the West Ham defence Gilbert to Fennick there's Kemba Jim Cannon, good cross that was, it came up, oh and Walsh's shot brilliantly saved, 
a header back in, Swindlehurst, it's gone in. Oh, unlucky Mervyn Day. The referee says no. Swindlehurst got the header into the net, but the referee, I think, has given a free kick. He's going to speak to the linesman now. And what's he going to say, I wonder? Does the goal stand or not? Free kick. Well, just let's go back over that incident because it was a terrific save from Mervyn Day in the first place. Really, from Walsh it was, brilliantly turned aside. The ball sprang up to Swindlehurst, the header went in, but I suspect the linesman saw a player in an offside position. some of their better football now. Free kick's been given. Foul by Bonds. Swindlehurst chip in. Walsh again in there. And everybody had come back. And now look at Brooking. Brooking and Kemba in pursuit. Kervis has made a great run through the centre for West Ham. Number seven. Good goalkeeping by Burridge. So quick off his line, he's great quality. That's awkward again. Good header once more by Bonds. Hooked away by Trevor Brooking. And Cross now makes a charge. He's still there, David Cross. But Burridge was well placed to save that. No problem for the goalkeeper. now very much in command here's Murphy oh Elwis Elwis scores and this time there's no flag and Palace have equalised with the substitute getting the goal Elwis the scorer Murphy's first shot well struck Mervyn Day got down but couldn't hold it and as it came back off the goalkeeper Elwis stole it to make the score 1-1 which is what it was when the teams met at Selhurst Park in August. So, what are the last 15 minutes we should have now? Cannon, Walsh. Five minutes to go, West Ham one, Palace one gets forward again for Palace and Tommy Taylor breaks things up Alan Taylor two Taylors on the field now for West Ham Kirvishley this is here's Brush Devonshire oh he's still going tangle it's going to come to Kirbyshley oh what a good save Burridge so alert it was well driven too by Kirbyshley oh and Burridge forced to turn it out Brooking is so good at curling those corners in So much swerve on the ball. Kirbyshley outside against Devonshire. Now it's West Ham's turn to argue with the linesman. So as we enter, time added on now for stoppages. Team still level at 1-1. Cross. Oh, that's nice. 
Nicholas getting back and competing well. It was actually won by Murphy. Here's Walsh. Swindlehurst pulls away to the left. Now it comes into the right. And the ball goes <laughs> exactly where he'd come from. Derbies so often go this way, don't they? Especially when two teams are chasing something as valuable as a promotion place. West Ham in command to start with. Palace getting to grips with the game in the second half. And the result, a stalemate, 1-1, which is how it ends. Palace may argue about the goal that they thought they'd scored, although I think we might reveal there was a player in an offside position there. But as it was, they got the equaliser anyway. Mike Elwis managing to get that and plenty of activity for the two goalkeepers here some good shots and some good saves but at the end of it all West Ham won Palace 